Hi guys, so here it is. I've been teasing it for the last couple of videos and here it is. I'm going to be turning this Batman 19 inch figurine into the Nightmare Batman from the Batman v Superman movie, the Nightmare, Nightmare sequence. So yeah, here it is. The uh, full tutorial of every single bit I have done to get this as screen accurate as I possibly can for the Batman v Superman Nightmare Batman. Enjoy! Hi guys, so this is the jacket that I'm doing for the Nightmare Batman. As you can see there he is, taking his cape off. And I've pretty much done these patterns by hand. Um, no real uh, pattern design behind it. So that is the back. Obviously this will be turned over so you can see the bare material on the outside. Now these will be the shoulders and then that will fold over to the front. So I've never done anything like this before. So let's sew it all together and see what happens. Okay guys, so as I previously mentioned, I've never done anything like this before. And uh, my sewing ability isn't great. Last time I did any kind of sewing was in primary school. And that was relatively easy because they had the, the sheet with the holes in and you pretty much just followed through the holes. So the stitching or sewing isn't going to be fantastic. Um, but to be fair, it's, all the sewing is going to be at the back. You're not going to really see it once the figure's finished. So here I'm sewing up the uh, left hand side and then I'll repeat the process on the right hand side. And here I'm sewing up the shoulders and again when I was doing the measurements and well I say measurements there wasn't really any measurements I pretty much just cut the, a, a sliver of material and place it up against the figurine and cut an oval for his, his uh, arm to go through and just by luck I got it the right measurements it's a bit big on one side and as you can see here I'm going to slide it over his arm and just see how it falls and then and as you can see here that's just one side and then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side and then sew it up down the middle and the shoulders have worked out quite well as I lift up the arm here you can see there's not much give underneath it's not too baggy and yeah it's so far it's, on, it's going looking good So that's now both sides done and as you can see it's not really looking like a jacket so far but I need to sew up the back and once I've sewn up the back I can go on to the collar and the lapels.
Now that's the jacket now all complete, all sewn together. Next step is to attach the arms. Now I don't have that, uh, I didn't actually record me drawing out the pattern again. I just did it by hand. I did look at a few reference photos to get a general idea of the shape. And uh, it worked out quite well. It was quite baggy, but you'll see in later on in the video, I, I have some material glue and I just glued the excess at the back of the arms just to uh, pinch it together at the back so that I could roll it up his, his arm and attach it at the top of his conduits. So you can see the arm is now done, I've rolled it up just to see how it looks and again as I mentioned I'm going to use some material glue uh, just to glue it together at the back just so it wraps around his arm nice and tightly. Now it would have been easier to include the lapels and the collar in with the jacket itself when I cut it together but as you can see here I decided to leave it separate because if I did then when it folded out it would have been the darker brown on the inside and not the light uh, material brown of the entire jacket so I left it separate and as you can see here I'm just sketching out the lapels and the collars onto a piece of card and then I'm going to use that as a template to draw onto material and then I'm going to include some tabs as you'll see in a minute to glue it onto the back of the oh sorry onto the inside of the jacket itself So here I'm measuring the width of the collar that I've already drawn out and cut out and I'm just making sure that the width of the collar matches the width of the lapel and uh, I'm just going to sketch out on one side and then use that template to flip it over to do the opposite side. And here I'm using reference photos uh, just so I can match up where the lapel starts and where it finishes so here on the reference photos you can see it finishes at the bottom of his bat emblem so I'm going to do the same I'm going to put make my uh, lapels as long and make it finish there you go marking it out and then I'll sketch it into the bottom of the batman uh, chest emblem So here's a quick photo I took of the figurine with the jacket on and I just wanted to point out I have cut the jacket uh, a bit wider on either side just to so you can see the bat emblem because it was a bit too wide and it was covering up all his chest. So as you can see here these are the two lapels that I'm going to be attaching onto the jacket and as you can see there there are some tabs that I've included. I'm going to be using them to glue it onto the jacket. And that's how they will attach onto the jacket. And I've just got to make you've got to make sure when you're attempting this that you cut and fold them the right way so the light bow material is uh, showing. Obviously if you're going to attempt this and you've got the material that's the same on both sides, again It'd be easier just to include the collar and the, the lapels include it into the pattern when you cut it um, but I've had to do it this way because of the fact that it's a darker brown on the inside
So here you can see me drawing around the template for the collar and as well as drawing around the template I'm also going to be drawing tabs onto it so that it can glue on the underside of the jacket. So here I am drawing the tabs on, it doesn't have to be precise um, because you're not going to be seeing these tabs and uh, you just need to put even lines across the whole thing and then you'll be cutting them into slits. So here I'm drawing around the material template again because uh, I realised that once it's be glued on the collar won't be that rigid so I'm going to be using this card to glue on the underside of the collar just to give it some strength and just so it stays in place. So here I am gluing the material collar back onto some card just to make it a bit more sturdy and what I'm going to do also is just glue a bit of scrap material to the card just to make sure that the glue does not seep through just as a test piece. So as you can see at the bottom the test piece is not sort through so I'm going ahead and gluing the collar onto the card. Here I am attaching the collar to the underside of the jacket, I apologise about the camera uh, focusing in and out, um, I didn't realise it was doing it. Uh, I had to do this on my knee, it was the most comfortable position to attach it, I tried to do it on the desk but um, as you can kind of make out I'm just gluing the undersides of the tab to the underside of the jacket. Okay that's the collar now attached to the jacket and with it being card all I had to do was fold it round with my fingers and thumb and it just folded it around the, uh, his neck and I think it came out quite well. Obviously because it was white card underneath I've just gone under with some black felt, felt tip pen just to colour in the underside. And now I'm going to be doing the same process with the lapels using the tabs to glue it on the underside of the jacket.
okay that's the jacket now done and uh, collars on lapels on it just needs to be folded up that'll be the last thing I do once the figures finished folded up on the arms so let's move on to the desert shemag so this is just uh, an old desert t-shirt um, that I have lying around and I'm just using different mixtures of brown yellows and different shades of brown mixing it all together and then I'm going to be using a brush just to dry brush the as you can see there dry brushing on just to give it that dark mudded you know sand worn texture and then I'll be cutting it up into a square to fit around his neck so I'm happy with the texture but I'm just going to add a bit of shoe polish just to give it that black um, dirty look and again I'm just using a dry brush to just to brush it on in random places okay so that's now the shading done and I'm just going, just going ahead and trimming the edges and then I'll cut it to size Okay, so now it's uh, cut into size, I've cut it into a square and all you have to do is fold it into a triangle, wrap it around his neck and then I'm going to be stitching it at the back with a bit of needle and thread. Okay, again with the uh, the old desert t-shirt that was an old army desert t-shirt and this is an old army uh, green thermal top that I'm going to be cutting up into strips to use as the wraps around his gauntlets again using reference photos I've chose this because of the color so yep cutting it up into strips and then I'll be wrapping it around his gauntlets Okay, let's move on to the combat trousers for the 18 inch Nightmare Batman and the way I got the pattern for this was I had a pair of combat trousers for the 12 inch Batman uh, sorry the a 12 inch Action Man that I was using for my 12 inch Nightmare Batman and I unstitched them to get the general pattern and then just scaled it up so they'd fit the 18 inch I do have the template for these if you want it I can email it to you so if you want uh, the template for the trousers leave a comment below and I will email it to you so again I've I folded them I stitched it inside out and as you can see here I'm folding it so it is the right way and then I will test and see if it fits his leg Yep, so it's a nice snug fit and as you can see I'm rolling it up there but I will be trimming it slightly just so it's not got so much of a, of a fold at the, at the knee. And here I'm just repeating the process for the other leg, stitching it along the seam, uh, stitch it on the outs inside and then fold it so it's the right way.
Okay, so that's both legs now done, folded inside out, and I'm just stitching the front and the back. Okay, the trousers are now complete as you can see and the next step is just to cut them just below his boots as you can as I've gone ahead and done here and the reason for that is so it doesn't bunch up too much above his boots and then I'm using a flat bladed screwdriver just to poke in the edge of his trousers into the inside of his boots. Okay, so using the same material as the trousers themselves, I've cut out some rectangles just to create some pockets effect. And then I've got a, an Action Man um, jacket off eBay, and I've just used the buttons off that for the pockets. I've done that on both sides, as you can see there. And then for his crotch um, because I didn't want to stick well I did stitch it but the stitch, you can see the stitches uh, I had to stitch it after the trousers were put on because they won't fit around his thighs if I stitched it before and then tried to put them on so what I've done is I've used again another bit of material the same as the trousers a little rectangle strip just and just to cover the stitches and I've just glued that on using material glue Okay guys, so this belt here I originally made for the 12 inch Batman Nightmare uh, but I managed to find a belt on eBay that was actually more screen accurate. So I'm going to recycle this into the belt for the 12 inch, sorry not the 12 inch, the 18 inch. Uh, now these are like metal rings that you can find on the bottom of pockets on combat trousers or shorts and they're basically just to let uh, air flow through the trousers and I got these and glued these onto the thin strip on an old pair of shorts so as you can see that is the thin strip but for the 18 inch I'm going to be cutting out the thicker strip and placing these on for the belt that goes underneath his utility belt on the Nightmare Batman. So that's the next step for the belt. So that's the belt now trimmed and all I'll be doing is transferring the metal eyelets onto the wider belt and then that will fit nicely fit nicely around his waist like so and as I did with his schmag I might use some dark brown and some shoe polish just to weather that up Okay guys, so the belt doesn't actually fit all around his waist, I'm not too bothered about that because the jacket will um, hide the sides of the belt and you won't even notice that it doesn't go all the way around. So all I'm doing here is using a bit of needle and thread just to tighten it around his waist and then I'll tie it off and cut off the excess. So that's the belt now in place. Uh, with the thread around the back and the eyelet, I glued the eyelets at even spacings and it's almost screen accurate. So now we're moving on to the gun holster. I've used reference photos again off the internet to find out the shape that I need. 
and it was just a matter of looking at the pictures of different gun holsters and then imagining it as if I'd uh, cut it in half and laid it out flat and this is the uh, design I've come up with so uh, now I've cut it out I'm just folding all the edges over so it'll sit into place and then I'm using super glue just to super glue it together So that's the gun holster now complete and it's going to sit nicely on his right hip and then we'll move on to the straps that wrap around his legs that hold the gun holster in place. So I've gone ahead and drawn the buckle onto a thin piece of craft form, a black craft form. Again using reference photos to get the shape of the buckle and then I'm going to be using the same brown craft form that I used for the gun holster. I've cut it into uh, thin strips and I'm going to be cutting slits into the buckle to thread the brown craft form through. Now I went ahead and made one just to see how it came out would come out and I was happy with the design, happy with how it came out so I'm now going to show you how I made it. So using a knife I cut a slit into the black craft form and threaded the brown thin strip of craft form through and back on itself slightly and that will glue into place. And then once you've threaded the brown straps through and glued them into place, please excuse my head. I'm just using a pen here just to draw in the details of the buckles. And that's pretty much them done. And the next step is to glue them around the leg of the figure. Okay, now we're going to attach the gun holster to the straps, making sure that no glue gets on the actual trousers because we want the gun holster to attach to the straps themselves, that way we can adjust it front and back if needs be. Okay guys, so here I'm looking at reference photos of the knee pads and I was, I was originally going to be using some plastic to do it but instead I'm going to use some black craft form. And here, as you can see, I've, I've sketched out the shape of the knee pad itself. And using a flat bladed screwdriver, thin flat bladed, I'm scoring out the design again using reference photos to get the exact design onto the knee pads themselves. And then I'm just going to be cutting them out and gluing them into place onto the actual trousers using super glue.
Okay, so that's the two knee pads all cut out and the design scored in. All that's left to do is to glue them onto the knees of the figure. Okay guys, so we're just attaching the knee pads on and this is pretty much the figure now complete. Nice and ready for the final reveal. If you've got any questions about any steps throughout this tutorial, please leave a comment below. Uh, please like and subscribe and there'll be more videos coming on these kinds of uh, customizations, uh, figure makeovers. I have lots of different ones in the works. So yeah, time for the final reveal. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been by far one of my most favorite customs, custom figurines, and I put everything into this. It's took me a while. <laughs> As like I say, I have teased it for a few videos. Uh, a few things I didn't go over through the tutorial. The goggles here, I got off eBay. To be fair, a lot of the things I got off eBay, but these goggles are just standard Action Man goggles. Uh, the straps were black and I've gone over them with some brown paint just to make them look more desert and also I'm still waiting on a pistol to come through the post again off eBay that will be going in there and also a one fourth size um, a rifle uh, that is the right dimensions for this size figure Again, that's coming from America, cost about £15 for a little rifle that's going to be about that big. Yes, it costs a lot of money considering the size, but that is the figure now complete. If you've got any questions on any steps that I've gone through, uh, please leave a comment below. I've, last time I looked, there wasn't any videos for this kind of customization. I've looked again today and I've seen one other video um, for a 31 inch um, customization into the Nightmare Batman so there isn't a lot of videos so hopefully this will uh, do well <laughs> this video um, but yeah please like and subscribe uh, I've recently just bought another one of these that I'm going to be customizing it into the uh, Joker I did mention it tease it in the last video but yeah that is going to be the next one I'm going to make it look like the Hot Toys Joker I have been using the Hot Toys Nightmare Batman for reference as you've seen in the tutorial I've been using that as uh, the reference photos for this customization but uh, yeah got any questions uh, any comments on this build this customization 
please leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're getting close to the next landmark. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next video. Cheers.